Thank you for giving me the opportunity to present The Bird That Laid the Cosmic Egg at the American Ornithological Society 2021 Annual Meeting. My name is Bernie Taylor, and my research explores a deep root to mankind's creative capacity by looking at how hunter-gatherers view their cosmos through the study of upper Paleolithic cave art. In this presentation, we will explore why large birds were depicted in upper Paleolithic cave art and how they may have been related to the Eurasian cosmic egg myth. We begin our journey with the cosmic egg, that mythic singularity in the creation of the cosmos from which the constellations and the great hero emerged. In this image, the hero Mithras was hatched yielding his long blade and torch. The Mithraic hero can be compared with the winged torch yielding Orphic Greek deity Phanes, who too emerged from a cosmic egg and is surrounded by constellations. Note that Phanes is coiled in the cosmic snake. The cosmic egg is found in the traditions of many peoples. Pictured here is the Chinese primal being Pengu, who breaks free from the cosmic egg to create harmony in the cosmos through a separation of the earth and sky that became yin and yang. There appears to be a common root to mythology in an era before we think of time. That source is a not so distant place on the outside of our own imaginations, where we commonly seek to explain from where everything began through the notion of a cosmic singularity. In physics, we approach this question of a singularity through the Big Bang Theory. This notion was originally called the hypothesis of the primeval atom, as first proposed by a Belgian Catholic priest on theoretical grounds, such that the universe was expanding. Einstein remarked to Lemaitre, your calculations are correct, but your physics are atrocious. Lemaitre's theory was soon after observationally confirmed by Edwin Hubble. I believe that this great question can be psychologically or mythically addressed in our earliest belief system, that is animism. We may find early evidence of the cosmic egg myth among some of the oldest artworks in the world at the Upper Paleolithic Cave of El Castillo on the Iberian Peninsula, where on the 10 meter across panel called the Gallery of Discs, there are more than 80 red discs that are on average about the size of the palm of your hand. One disc among them has been dated to at least 34,000 years ago. On this panel, we find an archetypal teacher and apprentice. Note the wide interested eyes of the apprentice and how the teacher speaks into his ear. Maybe he has the answer to this eternal question. Let's listen in. On the shoulder of the teacher is a fledging golden eagle that stands about a foot tall. This is roughly a mid to late June time period for the young eagle. There's also this mass cosmic man whose left leg and right arm are raised. The right hand holds what appears to be an egg. His left arm has a feathered texture. Is this the egg of a golden eagle? We will return to this question shortly to compare with the eggs of other pictured animals on this panel. Here we find a speckled mare. She appears to be leaping with her head turned away from us as if agitated. Our cosmic man merges with the speckled mare become what the ancient Greeks would have interpreted as a centaur. On our journey, we encounter mother Iberian lynx with a slightly tipped head and whose kitten pushes up against her ruff. This is a mid-June time period based on the stage of the kitten and is consistent with that of the fledging eagle. We encounter another transformation where a mask is put on to become a birdman or avianoid. Note that our hero's left hand is feathered in behind his back. This is the same feathered left hand of the cosmic man. They are one character. We enter a marine environment where we encounter a giant crab lurking under a ledge. There's a spinning bottlenose dolphin. Note that the dolphin is depicted above the surf. We find our hero appearing to be in the air. How does he elevate above the water? The artist reveals that the dolphin assists him. In this image, our hero wears a red pelt. We may be getting ahead of ourselves in the story. We reach the opposite shore, which is now Western North Africa, to be greeted by a monk seal. 
Where there's a woman in distress, see her sunken chin and cheeks, sorrowful eyes, and long braided hair accentuated by the red discs. There is a spitchous dog with its tail flopped forwards. Present day DNA studies indicate the spitz to be one of the oldest known dogs. We encounter a Barbary ape, which is indigenous to the Atlas Mountains of Morocco. And a juvenile giraffe who hides her neck behind her mother's. The giraffe is indigenous to Africa as well. There's also no evidence that there were giraffes in Europe during the time of the cave artists. There's an elephant drinking water from a pool and another with a raised trunk, or so it seems. Turn your head sideways and you will see that they are the same elephant the artist formed from the same ear and trunk. Our hero enters and swims in the pool. See his head and arms freestyle swimming. Our hero rises again, but this time walks up a hill at the top of the panel where he encounters a lion who paws him to the ground. The young man prevails, becoming the apex predator. As a symbol of that great strength, he wears the red spotted pelt. We continue on to find a mother bear watching her cubs climb a tree to safety. There's a crocodile with sharp teeth. Our hero gets mixed up in the affairs of the crocodile, but appears to stay away from her sharp teeth. There's an ostrich that seems distressed about something. When first working on the ostrich, I didn't see the legs and thought that the bird looked a lot like a floating swan. Remember the idea. We will return to it later. There was another bird, the now extinct great auk, which indicates we have returned to a marine environment and are homeward bound. On the journey home, we see a breaching humpback whale. Note that the whale is depicted above the surf in the same manner as the dolphin. Our hero rides home in the belly of the whale that is reminiscent of the biblical Jonah and the whale. So that our great epic story can be passed down to a new apprentice by the now Wiseman teacher. On our journey, we found that the gallery of discs depicts terrestrial animals that are indigenous to the Iberian Peninsula and the Atlas Mountains of Western North Africa, which are oriented north and south, respectively, when the panel is rotated 90 degrees. The marine animals are depicted in the middle. By following that upper Paleolithic map of animals, one can walk and swim from Cantabria, Spain to Jebatobacal, Morocco in about 30 days and roughly 1,700 kilometers in each direction. This journey opens the opportunity for the ostrich and or the great auk to have been from either Africa or Europe. We can turn back time to mid-June, some 35,000 years ago, to recognize many of the animals and people on the gallery of discs as ancient Greek constellations. Traveling from north to south at the top of the panel, we have the mass cosmic man, who is the constellation Hercules. The eagle that he merges with is Agala. The eagle also merges with the horse to give Pegasus wings. In that great astronomical expanse we call the sea is the bottomless dolphin Pisces, which is swimming southward. On the southern shore is the seal, which ancient Greeks found to be the monster Cetus. Near to the southern limit on this image, our hero Ryan is accompanied by the spitchest dog that is Canis Major. There is the elephant whose head is Aruga and the tusks are Taurus. The ancients substituted a horn bull for a tusked elephant. Our strong swimmer is the constellation Perseus who swims along the Milky Way. Hercules, Orion, and Perseus are the same character on this hero's journey, with each depicting the hero at different stages of the journey. They partly look differently because the constellations are shaped differently. The eyes of the Barbary ape are the twin stars Castor and Pollux in the constellation Gemini. The constellation Leo is the Nemean lion in Greek mythology. The bears are Ursa Major, oriented as they were in the summer months. The crocodile is Draco and from where dragons come from. The ostrich is Cygnus. Remember that an ostrich without legs looks a lot like a floating swan. If you have never seen an ostrich or missed the legs on the panel, this bird could be interpreted as a swan. The whale is Pisces traveling north and in the opposite direction of the dolphin. Both the dolphin and the whale were both depicted out of the water so that they could be found in the marine environment and in the night sky. With all these overlapping constellations, one could see how the ancient people 
came to believe that the cosmos came from a singularity such as an egg. From an ornithological perspective, we encountered three large birds. We can now better compare which egg the cosmic man may be holding in his raised right hand. Which one do you think it is? The upper pelvic egg appears to be more slightly elongated than any of these, although the great auk is close in appearance. Perhaps the elongated egg is from the crocodile who clutches it in her teeth, which the hero may have tried to steal from her in a feat of great heroism. The crocodile may have been the origin of the other pictured reptile that wrapped around Thanes, that same winged hero who is surrounded by constellations. This could mean that the ancients misread the upper part of the cosmic egg myth. Although not definitively determining that a bird laid the cosmic egg, we have learned that these feathered friends were still significant in the Upper Paleolithic. And like the Ice Age hero, they helped us to navigate time and space on land, in the marine environment, and through the night sky to a source of the cosmic egg. Thank you again for the opportunity to speak at this year's annual meeting. More in my work can be found at these sites. I'm always open to cooperate on projects and virtually present my work to community and academic audiences.